afterwards. <laughs> we'll be watching for you. Oh, damn you. I mean, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a very bad English accent. I did a show called Stonehenge Apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are so easy, it's terrible. <laughs> and I'm sweating like a mother up here, I apologize. Um, yeah, it, it was a really fun show. I got to work with Misha Collins, who is adorable. Oh my God, he's a sweetie, smart and funny and amazing, amazing, lovely. And it happens that his wife is best friends with my best friend in LA, so that was a weird small world. But it was a really fun, fun show. We knew it was not probably gonna be a great sci-fi movie. We have seen some of the other sci-fi movies and we know that perhaps that's not where they put their money or budget. <laughs> but they know they have a wonderful supportive audience and you guys let them get away with a lot. <laughs> but, um, but we had a lot of fun. Paul Ziller directed it, who I had met because he directed an episode of Stargate um, Atlantis years ago, so he just called me up and asked me to do it. It was like two days notice. I said, I can't do a British accent in two days. He's like, oh God, you sound British already. I said, no, I don't. He goes, oh yeah, you do. I said, okay, maybe for a BC boy, but no, I don't. I said, I'll do it if you guys get me a dialect coach. Well, obviously there wasn't the budget for that. So I get up there, they're like, no problem, you're fine. And I kind of went back to about 10, 15 years ago, I used to do a lot of B-movie action films in Canada. So I went back to that mentality and I thought, well, cool, nobody will watch it. We'll do it. I forgot about you fuckers. <laughs> Just for a second. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, but I think I've spoken about this before. I actually chose not to do that episode. It was, they asked me to do it, and I, I felt that, um, yeah, I felt that they had not been clear or committed to what her end was, and I did not want to be used as a carrot who just sort of came back once, an ep once a season and didn't really have anything substantial to do which was kind of my frustration at times throughout the whole series, that wanting her to have more action. So when they offered me that, I, I said, I will do it if you end it differently, if you rewrite it so that there is complete closure with Weir. And they weren't willing to do that, so I said I wasn't willing to do it, because I just felt that, um, yeah, it was just a dangle. And I think she deserved more than that. Anyways. Um, you, you know what, I've, I've only seen a little bit of Universe. I saw, I did a convention in England last year that David Blue was going to, so I made sure I, I grabbed an episode or two to check it out, and I really liked it. I thought it was lovely. I thought they're much more character-based, which I thought was interesting, and I thought it was something that I know we felt we were fighting for, wanted more character and less purely plot-driven. For an actor, it's more appealing. Um, so I, I enjoyed Universe, but to be honest, I haven't seen that much. I mean, to be honest, I hate saying it, but I'm watching television for me is a little bit like a busman's holiday, so I don't do it that much, so I don't keep up as I should. But I like Universe. Okay. Yeah. Great to see you. Pleasure to meet you earlier today. Um, actually, you lived in, in the Apocalypse movie. You're the only one who made it through, so we were happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> we did watch it all the way to the end. Bless you. I'll buy you a drink later. <laughs> <laughs> Can you uh, describe in a few words what's like uh, sort of the difference between working with uh, David Hewlett and then Joe Flanagan when they talk together on the stage? It's just absolutely hilarious. I can't imagine sort of being a mediator between those two. Can, is it just was it hard or just insanely bizarre? I mean, they're so different. What was that like? They're very, very different. It's it's quite wonderful. Um, I mean, I didn't have that many with the three of us, but it was always. I mean, there was always that camaraderie, like when David would come in, Joe and I would be able to roll our eyes behind his back, you know, because his character would take over, so we are and, and John would be able to have that bonding. Um, but I think she and, and, and um, McKay, we are McKay, had a deep, deep 
love and respect for each other as far as intellect based. You're not talking about characters, you're talking about actors. Um, <laughs> and I respect them both as deeply as we did. Uh, <laughs> But you know, it was, it was a lot of fun. David kind of takes over and is just the funny guy and a lot of us just sit back and enjoy it because it allows us to focus on what we're gonna do in the next scene. And he's somehow, and he's magic man, you know, he's able to go from juggling jokes to all of a sudden dive into a page of techno babble and seemingly doesn't need any prep time. Whereas Joe and I are a little bit slower. <laughs> we need a bit more prep time.